Here's a lady who thinks that dismissing the idea that the government is creating hurricanes and aiming them at Florida is the same as saying that no weather manipulation technology exists at all. So as you may have seen on last night's show, I said, I said that I was not mentally prepared to go into the whole uh, weather control. Conspiracy theories. I still don't think you're mentally prepared to address this nonsense. And then what happens? I come across this video. Now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College. Of, I mean, lasers? Really? Hang on. Can we just, for a minute, just all acknowledge that they tell us what they are going to do or what they are doing. Can, can we just agree on that? Who are they? Is Michio Kaku one of them? And if you think the government is deliberately making hurricanes and using them against states they don't like, when did they tell us that? Also, Michio Kaku has consistently been one of the worst science communicators in all of media. He has a long history of reducing science to clickbaity, sensationalized oversimplifications. Oh. That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. So right. So basically everything that the you know who's are saying, they're not making it up. It didn't come out of nowhere. Who are the you-know-whos? I don't know who. You mean the conspiracy theorists? If that's who you mean, then I think at least a few of them are making things up. The ones who are not making things up, but are saying that Democrats are sending hurricanes to Florida with a top-secret hurricane gun, are simply making absurd non-sequitur leaps of logic. The fact that cloud seeding technology exists doesn't mean that hurricane making or even hurricane steering technology exists. The greatest effect that cloud seeding seems to have ever been able to achieve is an increase in rainfall of about 30%. That's a far cry from creating or steering a hurricane. Here it is. However, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, create what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Katie, go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinating me in part because, too, I remember reading the story that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used it after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. That's a bit of an overstatement. They tried to use cloud seeding to extend the monsoon season, which is not exactly the same as bringing down monsoons. Phrasing it that way makes it sound like they were creating whole-ass monsoons. This was called Operation Popeye. This is pretty far from evidence that the government can create hurricanes. Governments have been playing alleged this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're beginning in the laws of physics, rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> yeah, so don't let your leftist acquaintances tell you that you're crazy and that you're just one of those people. <sighs> Well, I suppose you don't have to be crazy to make huge non-sequitur leaps of logic. Also, this looks like a Mott and Bailey to me. When Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted, yes, they can control the weather, while a hurricane is hitting Florida, she was clearly implying that the hurricanes were created and or steered by the Biden administration. When you point out that no such technology exists, they say, oh yeah, well, cloud seeding exists, so you're clearly wrong, as if that's the same thing as saying that the government has a secret hurricane gun. The community note on Marge's tweet succinctly made the point that while small-scale cloud seeding to create localized rain is possible, hurricanes and other large storms cannot be produced with modern technology. Some experiments were done to try to steer a hurricane, but it doesn't look as though they worked. According to PolitiFact, the day after the hurricane exited the state and was projected to continue out to sea without affecting any more people, aircraft flew out and dumped dry ice into the hurricane's clouds. The hurricane soon swerved west and gained strength. It made landfall in Georgia on October 15, 1947, causing one death and millions in damage to Georgia and South Carolina. The head of General Electric Research Laboratory believed the storm changed course because of the 
experiment, but the Weather Bureau chief at the time, Dr. Francis Reicheldurfer, disagreed. Willoughby, who was involved with Project Storm Fury, a similar experiment, said the Project Storm Fury investigators were very cautious after what happened with Project Cirrus even though it is unlikely that seeding had anything to do with a change in track. After Project Cirrus came Project Storm Fury, the findings from which showed that cloud seeding had little prospect of success, and that it was difficult to determine whether the changes happened because of the experiment or because of the hurricane's natural behavior. Willoughby said the project was abandoned because its scientific basis was discredited. So they thought at first that dropping some dry ice made a hurricane change course, but experiments on subsequent hurricanes couldn't reproduce the effect. So they concluded, quite rationally, that the change in course of the first hurricane was a coincidence. The conspiracy theorist's response to this, I imagine, is, that's just what they want you to think. If you still think that the military secretly has technology that can steer hurricanes and use them as weapons, listen to what Professor Dave says. So, now that we know what hurricanes are, the next logical question for our purposes here is, how in the hell would any government control this process, and without just blindly shouting lasers and leaving it at that, since we now know how hurricanes form? We are talking about hot, humid air over tropical bodies of water. Did the American government put a huge heater at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico? And of course, it's much harder to tackle than that. We aren't just talking about the generation of a hurricane, but the ability to control and direct it. Remember, we are describing quadrillions and quintillions of atmospheric particles simply obeying pressure differentials and exerting the power of tens of thousands of nuclear bombs. How does one control the behavior of this system exactly? A hurricane is not just thousands of nukes worth of power. It's several nukes per second worth of power for several days straight. You'd need an absurd amount of energy to even just steer a hurricane. How does the government use a weapon of such power without millions of people being able to directly witness it? The trillion watt lasers that Michio Kaku was talking about wouldn't even be a tiny fraction of the energy needed. A lot of conspiracy theories also specifically focus on HARP. Specifically, mechanistically, can you prod it with a stick and point it to where you want it to go? Can you shout at all the molecules angrily and give them coordinates to attack like a game of battleship? Of course not. It's air. And these storms are tremendously more powerful than anything we can hope to even lightly influence at our current level of technology, just like we can't control tidal waves or earthquakes or any other natural disaster. Conspiracy theorists have no ability to describe actual meteorological concepts, so they resort to simply listing random federal programs or technologies that most people are unfamiliar with. Let's return to that Instagram post. Nexrad, Doppler, and HARP. What are these things? Nexrad is Next Generation Weather Radar. Same with Doppler. This is describing radar technology. This is equipment for detecting weather and producing information about weather. They watch the weather. They don't create anything. It is about detecting wind and precipitation, and this data is processed to map the motion and patterns surrounding wind and precipitation. Check out Dave's whole video on this as well. It's a very thorough debunking. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.